Hello fellow astrophotographers and welcome back to our channel. Um, as you might already know, we have recently prepared uh, ASIR support for our flat panels. So you are able to control them directly from ASIR with special cable. I have put the link to the video regarding flat panel ASIR control in the description of this video. So you can check it out. But since then we got quite a few requests uh, to prepare similar support for our field rotator. Um, we tested quite a few variants of control with ASI Air and prepared a firmware update which will enable you to control the rotator with special cable uh, similar as uh, our flat panels. You can download uh, the new firmware uh, via the link in the description of this video. So once you updated the firmware of our field rotator to the newest version, you can simply connect it to the SIR with two cables. One cable is for the main power. Let's say we will connect this one to the port number two of the SIR and to the main power of field rotator on the other side. And the control cable to the port number one on SIR and to the accessory port on the field rotator make sure you press it all the way in here so the connection is good okay we have connected everything up now let's uh, demonstrate how it can be controlled in ASIR just a quick demonstration before I get into the details regarding the framing of the actual objects so first we turn on port number two which is main power so we can power up the rotator and now we turn on the port number one which is the control port of the rotator and for example let's choose just for the sake of demonstration 55% and when we turn the port off we will initiate the movement of the field rotator like so now let's see what happens okay you can see that the Field rotator is now moving the camera for a specific angle at the 55% value of the slider. I will explain how we can choose the desired angle shortly. Let's wait for the movement to finish. Okay, so rotation is finished. Uh, this was a quick demonstration of basic operation, which is similar to the flat panel. Basically, you control the device with slider position and initiate the movement in this case by turning the control port off. Now let's get into the details regarding the framing of your targets uh, with our uh, solution for our field rotator. On the top of the screen you can see how the slider values are mapped to the control of the rotator. Every customer will receive this table on a printed card along with the control cable. You will notice that on 5% we can reverse the movement of the rotation and all other values correspond to the specific angle of rotation. Now once you are under the stars, you will first need to calibrate the rotation direction so the rotator movement corresponds to the increasing angle of the objects in the sky. This is crucial for correct angle calculations. Now the simplest way to do this calibration is to plate solve your current position in ASIR. Then move for example for let's say 30 degrees and repeat the plate solve. If the plate solved angle increased, calibration is finished. If the plate solved angle decreased, you need to reverse the direction of rotation. To do this, select 5% on the slider and turn off the control port to confirm the action. This calibration is necessary only the first time when you use the specific telescope. After the calibration, you are ready to frame your objects remotely. This will require a bit of simple math, which is not really complicated. Let me explain. Rule number one. Each framing in the sky can be reached at two angles, which are 180 degrees apart from each other. This means that every time you want to reach the specific angle, have to move less than 180 degrees in order to reach it. Rule number two. If the target angle is smaller than your plate solved angle, increase the target angle by 180 degrees until it is larger than your current plate solved angle. Now let's take a look at a few examples to make this more clear. Example number one. 
Let's say your plate source position is 80 degrees and your plant's target is at 110 degrees. This one is quite simple. 110 minus 80 equals to 30 degrees. So we simply select 45% on the slider and confirm the motion by turning the control port off. You can check if the motion is finished by taking a short exposure. After the rotation has stopped, recheck the angle by plate solving again. Example number 2. Let's say your plate solved angle is 10 degrees and your plant target is at 260 degrees. Now if you remember rule number 1, each framing can be achieved in two positions 100 and 180 degrees apart. That is why we can subtract 180 from 260 target angle and now we get 80 degrees. Now this means 80 minus 10 is 70 degrees of motion. Example number 3. Let's say your plate salt angle is at 350 degrees and your plant target is at 30 degrees. If we read rule number 3, we can see that we have to increase target angle by 180 degrees increments until the value is larger from the plate salt value. So we can calculate 30 plus 180 plus 180 equals to 390 degrees. Now the math is simple. 390 minus 350 equals to 40 degrees of motion to reach our target angle. Now I know this seems a bit complicated, but once you get the hang of it, it's quite simple and it offers multiple advantages in comparison to manual rotation. For one, you don't have to be next to the telescope to rotate and uh, secondly, you don't have to do it by trial and error and multiple plate solving to get close to the desired angle. With that being said, I have put the link to our field rotator and cable in the description of this video. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to comment below. Stay tuned and clear skies!